And you guys thought I wasn't going to talk about this deck. What's up you guys, it's Sir Scrub here bringing you some more Scrub Tier Yu-Gi-Oh! And in today's video, we'll be taking a look at how to beat Salamangrate. Before we get into today's video, please leave a like and subscribe and let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Also, if you'd like to support the channel one step further, please check out my Patreon down in the description. But with all that junk out of the way, let's go and jump both feet into today's video. So, for those that are new to this series, I'll be breaking this video down into four parts. First, the strengths of the deck is if you were playing it. Second, how to beat it when you go first. Third, how to beat it when you're going second. And fourth, some relatively weak cards against this deck. So, starting off, what are the strengths of this deck? Firstly, this deck is extremely consistent. This engine needs very little setup to get rolling, and it can put out a decent amount of disruption. Another thing that gives its deck gives this deck its presence in the meta is it's relatively cheap, provided you're not playing Phantasme. Most of this deck can be bought in a structure deck, making the majority of the main and some of the extra deck available for $30, freeing up resources for duelists to tech this deck out. This deck sees play generally with the Artifact engine, which you know can be a little bit expensive with the trap tricks and all that. Overall, the main deck itself is very graveyard reliant, and the deck's main playmaker is of course Salamangrate Gazelle. This card can summon itself from the hand whenever a Salamangrate hits the grave, and it can mill a Salamangrate card from the deck when it hits the board. Because of the way it's worded, there aren't any timing shenanigans here. You can use a Salamangrate monster for link material and still trigger Gazelle. And it just so happens that the deck has a link 1 that most of the archetype can summon. Finally, Salamangrate Sunlight Wolf allows the, them to recover a lot of resources to support the deck's grindy playstyle, and it does have a counter trap card which it can recycle and is an Omni Negate. Overall, this is a relatively budget and competitive deck, however it does have some very key weaknesses, so let's take a look at how to beat it when going first. So off the bat, probably the best card to go for when prepping for Salamangrates is Abyss Dweller. Dweller being basically instant access in the extra deck, provided you can make a rank 4, combined with the fact that it turns the graveyard off for a turn, can really just take momentum away from a Sky Strike, or excuse me, a Salamangrate player. Also, for decks that can't really summon out rank 4s, Soul Drain is literally this card in a floodgate. These cards can also put in work in other matchups, specifically Orcist and Danger Thunder Dragon, and they can also prevent Ray from recurring in Sky Strikers. Um, Overall, probably the first card you want when siding in against this deck. Otherwise, this deck plays around Floodgates really well. Both Rivalry and Gozen don't really affect the deck. However, there can be only one puts in serious work considering the deck is all Fire Cyburst monsters. Skill Drain and uh, Mystic Mine also kills this deck. Let's go ahead and move into going second against the deck. So in going second, what can we do to stop them? Well, Impermanence or Veiler can stop both Gazelle or Sunlight Wolf. Ash can stop the Banelinx from searching in the field spell, which can lead to some awkward situations due to the deck losing its ability to Reincarnation Summon. Also, uh, DD Crow and Call by the Grave can remove things from their graveyard. Um, Twin Twisters is a great way to force negations, and once the negations have been forced, evenly matched is a blowout. Also, if they only end on one Link Monster, a Kaiju can turn the deck's counter trap off. Ultimately, this deck is another of the grindy and control decks we have in this particular format, and thus it has those inherent weaknesses I've discussed before. It dies to back row hate and smart play. Now let's look into some cards that don't really help you in this matchup. So starting off, field spell negations like Closed Forest or Set Rotation can slightly hinder the deck, but overall not enough to run them over some better options. Also, as I mentioned earlier, Rivalry and Gozen don't work well against this deck either, and Artifact Lancia isn't going to do you much good against this deck anyway. Anyways, that's all I've got for this one, you guys. Um, I didn't want to go into too much detail because everybody kind of knows how to deal with this deck. It's been out for a while now. I just did want to throw my thoughts in on the deck and give you guys a little bit extra information. Um, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like and subscribe and feel free to share this video with a friend. I'd also love to hear your thoughts down in the comments section below. And if you'd like to support the channel one step further, 
feel free to check out my Patreon in the description. But, most importantly, don't forget, be a scrub. Peace.